States concern, the United Kingdom, the United States, obey their own laws. If they do, Julian would be here speaking and thanking you rather than me. So let's uh, send a, a firm and appreciative me message, appreciation for an event in the future, a promise delivered to Anthony Albanese, the current Prime Minister, head of the Labor Party. Pick up the phone. Yeah, so David, do you want to just give uh, your analysis of the uh, political cross-section at this uh, rally? Yeah, well, I think it's the rally which has brought together uh, people from the left and right, if we can use those old defunct terms. Um, the, the left radical supporters have always supported Assange, never abandoned him uh, when he was his reputation was demonised and destroyed and have constantly been on this case. And then there's also been those radicalised on, on the right around opposition to mandates and uh, vaccines and this loss of trust in institutions and realising across the spectrum there was this guy who stood up and, and said what the system was like and he was one of the left. So there's this drawing together of people from the left and right, which is uh, unusual because of the divide and conquer uh, dominant politics. How could our greatest journalist, Australian citizen, still be being destroyed as a vengeful example of what will happen to you if you get out of line. And this crowd is not too dissimilar to the anti-mandate crowd as well. But it has that organisation core around Julian Assange all these years that has resisted and resisted and the core of that has been libertarian left thinking of, of this is our uh, golden boy who stood up against the power that we've known all along. And and I think that's the, there's also that quiet um, on the left, the distaste of, oh, this is what we're doing, destroying a person, and that no one on the left now supports what's happening to Assange, but they don't see it as any symbol of anything more significant. And it's just this terrible tragedy of how this could happen. Uh, but they don't see it as a symbol of the underlying corruption of the system. Yeah. So those who are here, uh, those of us who have come here are very much across that. But it, it's, I guess if your, your media is Fairfax, The Guardian, and even the Saturday paper, then you'll be getting a bourgeois uh, state corporate nexus press release journalism, basically. Yeah, and it will definitely be to contaminate the validity of yeah. the discussion with the presence of uh, the Enzyme flag or yeah. Yeah. any of the other symbols exactly. uh, of the right, rather than actually dealing with, isn't this interesting? Actually, people from the radical left and the radical right actually having common cause. Gee, that's interesting, isn't it? And that's the thing that many of us have been waiting for for 30 years. Uh, back when Pauline Hanson first rose, I said to my colleagues in the Greens that they should talk to her because she was anti-big bank and anti-globalist. But of course, all the emphasis in the media... And she was a localisation person. Despite, exactly. despite all her unpleasant things, yeah. there was this sort of Malthusian logic to, which may not be coming from an environmental or ecological perspective, but is actually about returning manufacturing and, and, and jobs in Australia. And so what I see that. from that early xenophobe uh, uh, is, um, and is actually quite a learning that's happened on the right. Whereas on the left, there's been this radical regression where now at the extreme, we have the German Greens as the advocates for the war against Russia. So we have this extreme 
support for the machine of empire. Yeah. This is a remarkable inversion of values. And this represents a coming together of common values of ordinary people, irrespective of their understanding of the what, what, how to explain what's going on in the world. Thanks, David. Awesome. Always great to chat. <laughs>